welcome. In this film, I'll be talking about thinking tips to help you navigate your way through these crazy matrix times that we live in. I'm worried, really, about how much the fuzzy thinking is going on in the world. You realize when you know how to think, it empowers you far beyond those who know only what to think. So in this video, I'm going to have four different sections. In the first section, I'm going to explain why developing your thinking skills is fun. The second part, I'm going to talk about some psychological obstacles to developing those skills. In the third part, I'll talk about some traps that we fall into, which are called logical fallacies. In the fourth part, I'll provide some tips. Learning to think clearly and discern skillfully can actually be a lot of fun. Have you ever wanted to drive in one of those luxury sports cars and just go speeding down a country lane, passing everyone else? Or even better, have you ever wanted to drive in one of those flying cars that allows you to just leap over a massive obstacle like a collapsed big rig in the highway? Well, the good news is when you sharpen your critical thinking skills to a really high point, that's what it's like. You're able to fly down the roadway of life and leap over obstacles as if you had superhuman powers while you look to your side and everybody else is chugging along very very slowly or, or crashing into each other left and right hitting the guardrail running into a stop sign because they don't have those skills so every tiny obstacle causes them to get all bent out of shape can you imagine how frustrating it would be if you're proceeding down the road and you crash every three blocks, you're in another car crash? That's what it's like to live life without good critical thinking skills. And that's the situation that a lot of people are in now, including many patriots in our community. They think that it's someone else's fault that they're in the confusion that they're in. They think it's the fault of the white hats for not telling me exactly what they're doing. They haven't realized that it's not somebody else's job to think for them. When you wake up to that truth, that's the beginning of a great liberation. One of the first things that can interfere with your thinking process are psychological issues. Because if you can't see things clearly, you're not going to be able to think clearly. And there are various psychological issues that cause distorted views on things. For instance, Someone who has an excess amount of fear is not going to be able to see clearly because they view everything through a lens of fear. There's also the general issue of how much psychological work we've done. How much have we grown? How much have we not grown? These undeveloped parts of themselves cause distorted views. One example of that is psychological projection. And you probably have the idea that psychological projection means that we're projecting negative things about ourselves onto other people. Like, for instance, we might be an, a very angry person, but we can't admit that, so we look at someone else and call them angry. You're so angry, Joe, when really it's us who's angry. Well, psychological projection isn't just about projecting negative things about yourself. It's also about projecting positive things about yourself onto other people. That's called a bright projection. And the result of that is that you're disowning your own powers and your own skills. Too many people are saying, are basically saying, that person has to do my thinking for me because I'm not good at it. I can't figure this out. You tell me what to do. In a little bit, I'm gonna be talking about logical fallacies, which are some of the obstacles to clear thinking. Right now, I just wanna mention one that I will call the, but we were told logical fallacy. Okay, a logical fallacy is some is some way of thinking that's all basically all messed up. But we were told fallacy implies that you're involved in this bright projection. You're assuming someone else out there is supposed to tell you that you shouldn't be just waiting for people to tell you things and spoon feed you. If somebody tells you something about what's going to happen or what the dates are, it's up to you whether to believe that or not based on everything else you know. Then there's the issue of have, how much have we developed our various psychological functions. Carl Jung identified four functions, thinking, feeling, sensation, and and intuition. And each of these four functions has two types. A lot of people are good 
at sensation, which has to do with being able to examine data, to look up close at the data. But they are not so good at intuition, which has to do with seeing the big picture and being able to connect the dots. And at this time that we are in, in this matrix time that we're in, being able to see the clues and connect the dots is actually far more important than being able to see the details up close. Because we are not being given all those details, folks. Other psychological issues to be aware of. Something we see a lot in the Patriot community. I'm so frustrated. I'm so angry. I feel like so down today. I think I'm doubting everything. That is not logical. You're feeling down today doesn't mean that anything in particular is happening in the world or not happening. All it means is that you feel down. It's a form of psychological projection. They're basically projecting their own very funky, depressed feeling onto the whole world. So now I'm going to talk about logical fallacies. What are logical fallacies? Sounds like something kind of dumb that people who are philosophy students would study. What, what use is that to me? It doesn't have any use in ordinary life, you might say. Well, you actually couldn't be more wrong about that. Logical fallacies occur absolutely everywhere. They're happening all around you every single day. Now, you may say, why do we have to know any logical fallacy? Why can't we just point out when an argument is not logical, when it doesn't make any sense? Well, you may not know why something isn't logical. Logical fallacies help you get clear on that. They show you patterns, categories, basically rules of what are logical arguments and what are not logical arguments. So the better you understand these, the more easily you can tell when someone's trying to deceive you, trap you, trick you into thinking something for the wrong reason. Now there are lots of logical fallacies. This book has over 300 of them. But we're not gonna go into all those because it would be tedious and somewhat boring. I'm just gonna mention a few key ones that you'll see quite often. So I'm gonna start out by showing you fallacies that have to do with this anecdotal situation where we imagine two robots talking and one of them trying to give arguments about why he thinks robots should take over the world. So, with the straw man argument, you are basically misrepresenting the argument or claim that someone else is making, perhaps intentionally, in order to try to smash it down. A very common situation of the straw man fallacy we see when people talk about homelessness. So, you'll see a lot of people saying, we have out of control homelessness, full of garbage, and we found 20 stolen bicycles and 5 stolen cars there, and there's drug addicts, and they're harassing people who come by. And then someone will come up and say, don't you have any compassion for those poor, helpless, homeless people? So this is a straw man argument. You basically ignored all the points that someone was making, and the only point you're making is not a point they were making. Okay, another very, very, very common fallacy we see everywhere is the either-or fallacy, also known as the false dichotomy, where you can only think of two possibilities. So, for instance, you'll have trolls that post, well, if Biden was inaugurated in January 2021, then obviously that means there's no white hats, because they wouldn't have allowed that. Okay, folks, there's more possibilities than that. Then there's a fallacy called post hoc ergo propter hoc, and basically this one has to do with you thinking that just because two things occur close in time, that therefore they are causally related, meaning one is the cause of the other one. That's illogical. Just because two things happen to happen at the same time doesn't mean they're related at all. You might have a state national who, who's all gung-ho on the power of state nationals, you know. All you have to do is say you're a state national and the, the existing government will just fold up like a bunch of circus tents in front of you and you can just stomp all over them. Have you noticed that's not happening? It's not happening. But some people still have this sense that they can just, you know, a sheriff stops them, gives them a ticket, and they can just say, no, I'm a state national. I just told that sheriff that I was going to sue him. And guess what? A month later, he resigned. <laughs> that shows how much power I have. No, it doesn't. The fact that he resigned most likely has nothing whatsoever to do with your interaction with him. Okay, and the most common fallacy of all that we see every day, everywhere, 
And I can't believe it because it's so basically stupid. It's the ad hominem fallacy. You're, you're actually refusing to even discuss the topic. Instead of addressing their argument, you're attacking the person. Have you noticed no one has ever actually made a good argument about why Trump is a bad guy? All they do is they call him names. Dude, every day that I'm alive, I understand where Donald Trump was coming from even more. And just saying that, just saying that is going to make some people, their heads turn into a bottle cap and you shook and fucking fly off of their body. That's what, just because, and why? Like, think to yourself, like, actually why? It's like, well, I hate him. Why though? Why? Because somebody said, because somebody told you to, dude. Because somebody told you, or somebody told you something that he said. Almost all the time, it isn't what he said. And Donald Trump is just one example. It's fucking crazy. I used to think of myself, I was super liberal. I used to be super liberal. I used to be super liberal. And, uh, I literally, whenever somebody would say fake news, I thought to myself immediately, my immediate reaction was you dirty hillbilly. That's what I thought to myself. Everything is fake news. The man couldn't have been more right. Now I wanna talk about several logical fallacies that the cabal uses. As part of its propaganda and brainwashing, adjacent equals equivalent or appearance equals essence. And this is what all the trans insanity is essentially based in. It's saying, well, so-and-so looks like a woman, so they must be a woman. No, there's also another fallacy applying to the trans insanity is the two sides fallacy, which is basically pretending as though this is just an issue where there are two different opinions. No, it's not true. There are not two possible different definitions of what is a man or what is a woman. It's not open to debate. For instance, would you say that the issue of whether a tree is a cow, it's just a matter of two different opinions. No, you can see how insane that is, right? This is one of the ways the cabal has gradually pushed its propaganda and tried to normalize its depravity and insanity. Oh, well now we have people that just have this new idea or opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. It's just another opinion. So that's the way they start it with the two sides fallacy. But then gradually, as you've seen, they use gaslighting so that the truth becomes unacceptable and only their insanity is now acceptable. Now some tips on thinking skills. So the first one is reading comprehension. I see a lot of people on the chat groups who are replying to things that were not said. Before anything else, before you can reply, before you have to actually hear what was said. Along with that, you need to be clear about what is relevant because not everything is equally relevant. Another tip is first principles thinking, which I mentioned in a previous video. Your first principles are your foundation of your life and of your thinking process. If you don't know what your first principles are, you're gonna have a hard time because it's gonna feel like you're constantly grabbing at things that seem to disappear and you're on s unstable, shaky foundations. You need to figure out what you actually believe in. What are your foundational beliefs? Another tip is to think things through to the conclusion. You use a process of if, then. If this is true, then what are the consequences of that? I see a lot of people especially those who believe there's a cabal but do not believe that there are white hats, who haven't thought things through. If there's only bad guys in the world who are destroying the earth and their plan to kill almost all of humanity, then where are we going? Another thinking tip is to use your imagination in your thinking process. Some people have the wrong idea about what imagination means. They think it means you're thinking of fantasies or make-believe, things that will never happen. That is not the only use for imagination. Imagination applies in very practical ways, such as helping you realize there's not just two possibilities, there might be more than two. For instance, something we commonly see in the Patriot community, where they say, well, if this doesn't happen, then that must prove there's no white hats. And a final thinking tip is hold things lightly. Learn to live in what is called don't know mind meaning it's okay not to know. I don't have to decide everything. I don't have to know everything. There can be a lot of things I don't know. I don't have to know the timeline. I don't have to know what is exactly gonna come after we take out the cabal. I don't have to know. Have you noticed? 
You can keep on actually living your life day to day without knowing all these things. A healthy mind is one that flows like a river of water. An unhealthy mind is like a steel trap. It's very rigid and it can only slam down hard on certain ideas. You can't conceive of other ones. In conclusion, I want to suggest some homework for you if you are actually interested in developing your critical thinking skills. The first one is write down some of the psychological obstacles that you believe that you have towards thinking clearly. Number two is get a list of logical fallacies somewhere, maybe online. Write down some examples of at least 25 of them. And number three, consider the tips that I mentioned on thinking more clearly and write down how you would apply that in your own life. Or if you don't like the tips I gave, come up with one of your own and mention how you would apply that in your life. Thanks for watching and may you go forth flying through the world with your extraordinary thinking skills.